Hi guys, my name is PJ and today I'm going to be showing you the Roland DJ505 controller. The DJ505 is a Serato DJ Pro controller and it's been created in close collaboration with Serato to create a product that works really, really well with the Serato software. All of the main functions are available directly from the top panel of the controller and it has a lot of additional functionality and lots of features that are often not available on other DJ controllers. It features the TR drum machine, the ability to sequence sounds from the Serato sampler, it comes with a full license for Serato DJ Pro and the Serato DJ Toolkit, it has a MIDI output on the back of the controller and has some of the lowest latency platters on the market for a Serato DJ controller. The unit has a really high build quality and to keep weight down it has a hard plastic chassis so it's really lightweight and portable and actually only weighs 3.5 kilograms. Where the unit gets most use it has extra protection with a metal top plate and brushed aluminium platters. There is also a custom bag designed specifically for the unit that has a laptop section. So if you have this bag, you have everything in one place ready to go. The 505 is Roland's mid-range controller. It sits between the entry-level model, the DJ202, and the flagship model, the DJ808. It features a very similar TR drum machine to its older brother, the DJ808, and has the same platter technology as its younger brother, the DJ202. In 2018, the 505 won the DJ Mag Tech Award for the best controller under £600 and got some really great comments from the judges about its features and functionality. To install the drivers for the DJ505, please first check that you have the appropriate system requirements. I'm going to put them on the screen now. So installation for Mac, first of all download the driver from the Roland webpage. Then decompress the driver file and double click the package file. Then follow the on-screen instructions to install the software. To install the driver on Windows 10, make sure your computer is already connected to the internet. Connect the DJ505 to your computer and the driver will download automatically. So, I'm now going to show you how to install the Serato DJ Pro software. To install on a Mac, download the program from the Serato Downloads webpage. When this is downloaded, double click the package file. Follow the on-screen instructions. And when this window appears, the software is ready to use. To install the Serato DJ Pro software on PC, download the program from the Serato Downloads webpage. Decompress the file and double click the exe file, then follow the on-screen instructions to install the software.
You will now have both the drivers and the Serato DJ Pro software on your computer and you'll be set up and ready to go. The DJ505 comes bundled with a lot of great software. It comes with the full version of Serato DJ Pro and it also comes with the Serato DJ Toolkit. The Serato DJ Toolkit is a really great bundle of software which includes Serato Flip. This allows you to create edits and extensions of tracks by using cue points and loops. So, when you're playing live, you can choose any version that you've created, or because the editing is non-destructive, you can still play the original version of the track. The Serato DJ Toolkit also includes Serato Pitch and Time DJ. This is a more advanced version of the Serato Pitch Lock. It allows you to sync tracks by key as well as by tempo. This is really, really cool for DJs who do harmonic mixing. The Serato DJ Toolkit also includes all four of the Serato DJ FX expansion packs. These have been created in collaboration with Isotope, and this is actually the full range of effects that Serato currently offers. It features all of the standard effects like filters and reverbs, but also some really crazy effects like space echo and UFO. It's a really cool bunch of software and the 505 is actually the only Serato DJ controller on the market that comes bundled with both the Serato DJ Pro software and also the Serato DJ Toolkit. And if you were to buy all of this software separately, it would cost you around 120 euros. For more information about Serato Flip or Serato Pitch and Time DJ, please check out the links in the video description. The DJ505 features a professional quality audio playback engine with 24-bit and 48kHz audio fidelity. The mixer section of the controller can be used standalone with traditional turntables or CD decks. The DJ505 is also DVS upgrade ready, so with the upgrade you can use your turntables or CD decks to control the Serato software on your computer. There are dedicated controls for browsing and loading your tracks. Use the main knob to browse through your library. You can then use the back controls to move up a level in your folder and you can press in the knob to select a folder. You can then use the load control to load your chosen file onto the left or right deck. The DJ505 features a professional two-channel mixer. This has controls for high, mid and low and there's also a trim control to add extra gain if needed. Each channel also features a dedicated filter. Moving the filter to the right will engage a high pass filter and moving the filter to the left will engage a low pass filter. Below the filters, there are cue buttons. When pressed, these allow you to listen to each channel or to the TR drum machine and Serato sampler through headphones without it coming out of the master output. If you press shift and press the Q button at the same time, you can also use these buttons to tap a tempo. This tempo will then be output to the left or the right deck or to the drum machine. The channel faders are used to define the outputs level of each channel. The left side corresponds to the left platter or left channel and the right side corresponds to the right platter or right channel. In the centre of the mixer, you have the master level knob. This controls the overall level of the controller. There is also a control to adjust the level of the signal coming out of the booth speakers. Using the booth control, you have control over the DJ's monitoring level without adjusting the level of the master volume. 
There is also a mixing knob. This controls the volume balance of the headphones. You have the option to listen to just the channels that have the cue active, or to listen to the master output of the speakers, or to have a mixture of both. In the center of the controller, we have an LED level indicator. This shows us the level of each channel and also the overall master output. The DJ505 has a great crossfader. When the crossfader is fully to the left, only the left channel will play, and when it's fully to the right, only the right channel will play. When the fader is in the middle, both of the tracks will play at an equal level. The crossfader has an adjustable response curve which can be changed on the front panel of the controller. There are three settings which you can choose from. Power mix, linear mix, and tight response. In power mix mode, the volume of the starting track will be full until you reach near the center of the fader. At this point it will quickly fade out and the new track will quickly fade in. In the linear mix mode, as you move the fader from one side to the other side, the audio will blend smoothly from one track to the other track, with the volume of both tracks being at 50% when the crossfader is in the middle. In tight response mode, the audio from the non-selected track will be heard at full volume as soon as you move the crossfader in a small amount. This mode is very useful for scratching and other turntable tricks. The platters on the DJ505 have been made in collaboration with the Serato engineers to ensure an extremely low latency and a really good pickup time. This has helped them to become some of the lowest latency and highest response Serato controller platters on the market. The platters on the DJ505 have two modes. By pressing shift and the slip button, you can change between normal mode and vinyl mode. In normal mode, if you put your hand on top of the platter, and rotate them backwards or forwards, it will slowly pitch bend the track. This is useful for precisely beat matching your songs. In vinyl mode, when you touch the top of the platter, the song will completely stop and be manipulated backwards and forwards depending on the movement of your hand on top of the platter, similar to if you were using a traditional turntable with vinyl. If you rotate the outer edge of the platter, it will speed the track up if rotated forwards and slow the track down if rotated backwards. With the key lock function off, rotating the side of the platter will also raise or lower the pitch of the playing track. If you hold shift and rotate the platter on the turntable, you'll be able to scrub through your track at a fast speed. This is really helpful in enabling you to quickly find an area in the middle of a song.
Using the tempo slider will change the tempo of the track playing on that deck. Sliding the control up will reduce the tempo of the song and sliding the control down will increase the tempo of the song. Pressing the key lock function activates the key lock. With key lock turned on, the pitch of the track will not change even if you use the tempo slider to change the song's tempo. If you press shift and press the key lock, it will change the resolution of the tempo slider. You can change it from plus 8% to plus 16% and the top value of plus 50%. The shift button is used to activate a lot of functions on the controller, including getting access to secondary uses for the performance pads and removing cue points. All of the controls that can be activated by using the shift button have a grey box around them on the controller. The sync button allows you to automatically match the tempo or beat grid of your songs. The BPM will change to match the tempo of the song on the other deck or the BPM set on the drum machine. The first press of the Q button allows you to input a temporary Q point. After this first button press, if the audio is playing, any subsequent presses will return you to the original Q point. If you wish to insert a new cue point, press the cue button when the audio is not playing. Pressing shift and the cue button will return you to the beginning of the song. The play button starts playback of the song and pauses playback of the song. To slow down the start of playback, or to allow the playback to slow gradually when you press pause, enter the settings and adjust the start and release timings. I usually have my release settings around here to give an effect similar to that of a turntable. On the controller there are deck selection buttons. These buttons are used to select a secondary deck that is available on both platters. With slip mode activated, the platter will respond to your movements or your cues, but will keep moving through the song. This can be useful for performing scratching tricks without losing your place in the song. The RGB performance pads at the front of the controller can be used for a variety of different functions. These functions can be changed by using the pad mode selection buttons at the top of the pads. Hot cue mode allows you to enter a cue point into a track whilst it's playing. Pressing a pad will enter a cue point into the song at that point. From then on, pressing a pad will return you to that cue point location. To remove a cue point, press shift and the corresponding pad. If you press shift and hot cue, you will enter cue loop mode. 
This is shown with the performance pads changing to blue. Q loop mode allows you to trigger Q points which automatically loop. The duration of the loop is defined by the parameter buttons at the bottom of the controller. If you press the hot Q button twice, you will enter flip mode. This is shown with the mode illuminating orange. Flip mode allows you to trigger your flips that have been created in the Serato Flip software and saved to a track. For more information on using Serato Flip, please check out my dedicated video in the link in the description below. By pressing the roll button, you will enter roll mode. This allows you to trigger repeated hits of the sound playing at different speeds depending on which pad you press. These timings can be adjusted with the parameter settings. To enter slicer mode, press shift and roll. The RGB performance pads will illuminate red. The slicer mode allows you to roll sections of a track using visual cues shown on the RGB performance pads. The size of the repeated audio can be changed within the parameter controls. To enter slicer loops mode, press shift and roll twice. The pads will illuminate blue. The slicer mode allows you to roll sections of a looped part of a track without dissolving the main loop. The size of the repeated audio can be changed with the parameter controls. To enter save loops mode, press roll twice. Here you can turn on or off any of your save loops. To save a loop, first create a loop around an area. If you then go to the area underneath your cue points, you can lock this loop and save it to the audio track. When you recall this track, you can go to the save loops mode and turn any of these loops on or off. By pressing the sampler button once, the pads will illuminate magenta and you will enter sampler mode. In sampler mode, you can trigger sounds that you've loaded into the Serato sampler slots at a fixed velocity. To load a sound into the Serato sampler slots, drag and drop it to your slot of choice. You will then be able to trigger it from the corresponding pad on the controller. It is possible to save four banks of samples at any one time. For a full rundown of the features available in the Serato Sampler, please check out my Serato Sampler overview video, the links will be in the description below. By pressing Shift and Sampler, you will enter the Velocity Sampler mode and the pads will illuminate purple. This mode is the same as the normal Sampler mode, but the sounds will vary in velocity depending on how hard you hit the pads instead of them having a fixed value.
If you press the sampler button twice, you will enter pitch play mode. You will know you're in this mode because the pad will light up green. By using the Serato Pitch and Time DJ expansion, this mode will allow you to play any sound loaded into the decks melodically like it was an instrument. If you press the TR button once, you select the TR drums mode, and when you press the pads they will illuminate red. You can then use the pads 1 to 8 to play the TR drum sounds in a fixed velocity. The pads 1 to 8 correspond to their relative number within the first 8 steps of the drum machine at the top of the controller. By pressing the TR button twice, it will light up as orange and you will enter TR drums velocity mode. In this mode, the pads function in the same way as in TR mode, but will vary in velocity depending on how hard you hit them, instead of having a fixed value. If you press SHIFT and TR, you will enter pattern mode. A pad will illuminate green to reflect this. Here you can use the pads 1 to 8 to select patterns 1 to 8. You can also use the parameter buttons to shift to patterns 9 to 16. At the bottom of each platter, there is a dedicated area for triggering and controlling your loops. Using the auto loop button, you can activate an automatic loop for a duration set by the loop parameters within the Serato software. If you press shift and the auto loop button, this will turn the loop off. There is also controls for one half and two times. Using these buttons will either half the duration of the loop if you press half and double the duration of the loop if you press two times. If you hold the shift button and press these controls during playback, it will shift the entire looped area to the left or the right. Pressing the IN button will start the creation of a custom loop. When you then press the OUT button, the song will replay from the position you specified with the IN control. Holding SHIFT and pressing OUT will either deactivate or restart your custom loop. Holding SHIFT and pressing the IN button will change your loop slot selection within the Serato software. At the top of each deck, there is a section for controlling your effects. There are three knobs which correspond to the three slots within the Serato DJ software. Turning these will change the amount of mix for the chosen effect from 0 to 100%. The effects buttons below these knobs will turn the effects on or off. If 
you press shift and the effect button, it will move through the effects list on that slot. You can also move through the effects list by holding shift and scrolling with an effects knob. At the end of the row of knobs, there is a beats knob. This can be used to adjust the timings for the selected effect. Using the tap button below the beats knob allows you to tap the tempo for the selected effect. Pressing shift and the tap button will change the effects mode from single effects to multi effects. The channel assign area allows you to assign the effects section to deck 1, deck 2 or the TRS drum machine. When pressing shift, you can assign the effects to deck 3 and deck 4. One of the most standout features of the DJ505 is the TRS drum machine. This is located at the top of the controller and features the classic drum sounds from the 606, the 707, the 808 and the 909 drum machines. To select an instrument, press the instrument button. Pressing the first 8 steps will select the different classic drum sounds. The second eight steps will allow you to trigger sounds that you have loaded into the Serato sampler. Once you have chosen your instrument, you will enter the TR record mode, which will allow you to enter steps into the sequence. By using the start stop button, you can start the drum machine playing. You can also add notes into the sequence in real time by pressing Shift and TR Rec. This will put you into instant record mode. You can then add steps into the sequence by using the RGB performance pads in TR mode. You can also add steps and use instant record for the Serato sampler banks in the same way. To change one of the classic drum sounds, press and hold the sound you wish to change and turn the value knob. On the display you will then see different instrument names you can choose from. Using the controls in the top right corner, you can adjust settings for the entire instrument. The level knob allows you to adjust the instrument's overall level. The tune knob adjusts the instrument's overall tuning. The attack knob adjusts the strength of the initial hit of the instrument. And the decay knob adjusts how long each instrument takes to fade out.
If you hold a step and turn the value knob, you can also adjust the velocity of each hit. By pressing shift an instrument, you can select a preset kit or you can switch between your different sample banks in the Serato sampler. If you press the mute button, the pads will light up purple and you can mute certain instruments within your pattern. This can be very useful when doing live performances. Pressing the pattern button will allow you to switch between different patterns by using the step sequencer pads. If you press shift and pattern, it allows you to enter accents on top of steps within the sequence. Using the shuffle button will allow you to adjust the swing of the pattern. The value goes from plus 50% to minus 50%. The scale button allows you to change the timing of the TRS drum machine. It allows you to set different triplet and whole note patterns. Pressing shift and shuffle will allow you to nudge the pattern forwards or backwards. This control can be useful when you're trying to synchronize with external sources not clocked by the DJ505's drum machine. The DJ505 features a 5-pin MIDI connector on the back of the controller. This means connecting pieces of external hardware is really easy to do. The connected piece of hardware will be triggered and will receive tempo change information from the TRS drum machine. To connect a device, take a 5-pin MIDI cable from the back of your DJ505 and insert it into the MIDI in on your external device. Then take the audio out of your hardware and return it into the DJ505 into one of the line channels. You can then use the channel selection switch on the front of the DJ505 to choose line and you'll be able to hear your hardware being played back through that channel. On the front panel of the DJ505, you will find lots of inputs and switches. There is a dual headphone input for both a quarter inch headphone jack and a MIDI headphone jack, along with a headphone volume control. There are controls for the crossfader curve and a crossfader reverse. I've covered these controls in more depth in my dedicated crossfader video. Um, a link to this will be in the description. There are also the channel assign controls. These allow you to set the input of the channel from three sources. PC, which will allow you to hear the output from the Serato DJ Pro software. Line, 
this will give you a line level output for anything plugged into the rear RCA line inputs. For example, you could use this for an external synthesizer or drum machine. And Phono. This is a special channel setting dedicated for when you're using analog turntables plugged into the Phono inputs and playing traditional vinyl records. On the far right of the controller, there is also a mic level control which allows you to adjust the volume of a connected microphone. The back panel of the DJ505 is where you'll find your master output connections and other controls. First there is the USB port. This is where you'll connect a USB cable that will then go into your computer. Then there is the MIDI output. Here you can connect a MIDI cable which can be used to control external MIDI hardware. There is a quarter inch jack input for a dynamic microphone and also a control which will adjust the mic sensitivity. There are RCA sockets which are for your line and phono inputs and there's also a phono ground which is used when connecting analog turntables which use a ground cable. There is the master output section which has both XLR and RCA connectors for your master out. And then next to this there is the quarter inch jacks which are used for your booth speakers. At the end of the panel there is the power input, the power switch and also a cord to hook and secure your power lead and stop it being pulled out accidentally. So, if you guys have followed all the videos in this series, you should now know how to use all the aspects of the DJ505. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel for future content and thanks a lot for watching.